All right. So now it's time to talk about the modern day formulas now that we know the history of the biometric calculation formulas. And the first modern uh, formula that comes to my mind are uh, the Hegel's and the Holiday 2. And uh, the Holiday 2 uh, made it uh, basically the introduction of the Holiday 2 formula was path breaking in the sense that now the constant was not just tied to axial length and the corneal power, but uh, the Holiday 2 formula for the first time uh, understood that it's very important to take in other considerations before um, to in order to uh, find out the IL power effect. So uh, the Holiday 2 went into the axial length, K readings, white to white, ACD, patient's manifest refraction, lens thickness, and the age of the patient, all right? Out of this, if you, um, uh, it's, it's important to mention over here that the anterior chamber depth and the lens thickness are something which all modern formulas, like the Parrot Universal 2 formulas, the, uh, the C constant of the Olsen formula, they all take into account the anterior chamber depth and the lens thickness. But Holiday 2 uh, takes into account the seven variables. Let's uh, put our attention on the Haggis formula because uh, along with the Holiday 2 formula, the Haggis formula is also one of the first fourth generation formulas. All right. So uh, we learned about the A constant and how we saw how the A constant, um, that is the constant was improved right from SRK formula to SRK2 to SRK T. But uh, uh, the A constant actually did what when, 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 when uh, the SRKT formula improved the A constant where, and it tied it up with the, uh, not only the axial length, but the central corneal power, what they try to do is basically they try to um, identify the power prediction curve, right? They wanted to predict the power, power curve uh, in, a, in a better way. Uh, but it was in a linear fashion because you are now trying to predict the power curve through only one constant. And uh, where uh, the Haggis as a fourth generation formula plays over the SRKT formula is that it does not have just one constant. It has three constants. That is the A0 constant, A1 constant, and the A2 constant. The A0 constant works like the A constant of the SRKT formula, right? Uh, that is, it is tied to the manufacturer's uh, A constant uh, uh, that, that the manufacturer is supplying. But the A1 constant is tied to the anterior chamber depth, as patient specific anterior chamber depth. And the A2 constant is again tied to the patient specific axial length. So here you do not have just one constant, you have three constants. Hence, your power prediction curve is not linear but it's basically dynamic, right? And in order to optimize the Hegis constant, you can only uh, optimize the A0 constant. Now, you can't optimize the A1 and A2 constant. In order to optimize that, you have to send the data to Dr. Ulf Hegis. Well, uh, this brings us to another, disc uh, another formula. That's the Olsen formula. And this formula is developed by uh, a, a, a surgeon from the Denmark. And uh, many consider this formula as actually uh, a fifth generation formula. And it brings us the concept of C concept, right? C constant. Uh, so what's this, uh, what's this C constant is all about? Well, uh, the C constant can be thought of as a ratio by which the empty capsular bag, that is when you throw out the human crystal and lens, that is the empty capsular bag will encapsulate and fixate an IOL following in the bag implantation, right? So this approach actually predicts the IOL position as a function of preoperative anterior chamber depth and the lens thickness. So it basically takes into a function of anterior chamber depth and the lens thickness of the uh, patient preoperatively. And accordingly, it brings in the concept of C constant, C constant, which is a, which is a combination of these two, the anterior chamber depth and the lens thickness, right? Uh, 
no discussion will be incomplete uh, will be complete if we uh, do not talk about uh, dr warren hill's contribution in the biometry and uh, well uh, where are the biggest challenges in biometry today even in average eyes uh, the srkt formula will work very well right and uh, average formulas will do quite good in average eyes uh, but uh, the fourth and fifth generation formulas the importance of these formulas comes in the non average eyes and uh, and uh, if you want to uh, improve outcomes in this non average eyes in very long eyes very short eyes i think uh, the contribution of hill rbf calculator is going to be uh, great in the near future and uh, what's this hill rbf calculator well uh, this is uh, this uh, this is uh, there in the dr hill's website so the hill rbf calculator is based on um, an analysis of uh, many data right uh, for example think of it that your patient is having a 23.5 uh, mm of hg length but how many of co these combinations can happen with the hg length of 23.5 like the anterior chamber depth uh, can be from 2.2 to 4 mm 4.2 the lens thickness can be um, of another combination with this 23.5 hg lens so there can be different combi com combinations of keratometry anterior chamber depth lens thickness this can be of different there can be different permutations and combinations and what uh, uh, dr hill has done um, with the third party is that they have compiled all this data so that when you enter your hg lens your corneal curvature your patient's anterior chamber tape the uh, the the calculator predicts that this is going to be the ial power based on the data analysis that it has done in the background so it is basically free of any calculation bias it is not like uh, a a lens formula calculation formula it is a data analysis formula now one of the biggest challenge in uh, in uh, uh, predicting ial power uh, is in the very high myopic cases right and uh, um, there are many challenges in these cases for example very high myopic cases could have patients could have posterior staphyloma right though uh, with the advent of uh, the optical coherence biometry uh, and laser biometry um as uh, th 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 this is not that of a problem because this was more of a problem with a with a scans where you had to do a b scan uh, but one of the biggest problems with the uh, ial power prediction in very high myopic cases is that what formula would you be using right and uh, here in comes the importance of probably uh, the hill rbf uh, uh, calculator that is uh, in the hills website also i would like to talk about a recent paper i would not say recent because this was published in the jcrs in 2011 and this was uh, this is the wang and cock paper where they have provided um, certain adjustments based on the axial length uh, uh, determination so uh, the, the wang and cock paper basically give us some adjustments of how you can do some adjustments on what the axial length you have got from the patients so uh, they have given adjustments for the holiday one formula for the hegis formula the hisarkity formula as well as the uh, the hoffer q formula uh, though you uh, may not like to use the hoffer q formula in very extreme uh, myopic cases the name of the paper is uh, written by wang and cock uh, optimizing intraocular lens power calculations in eyes with axial length above 25.0 mm and this is in the jcrs 2011 volume 37 and from 2018 uh, pages to uh, 2027 and they give us clearly some broad guidelines of how you can do the axial length uh, adjustment based on your axial length findings of the patient and if you're using an holiday one formula or a hegis or or uh, the srkt formula you can make those adjustments to the axial length that you have uh, got for of the patient but notice that uh, if you are using a, a, a hill rbf formula uh, or if you are using the parrett 2 formula 
you do not need to make any adjustments. As you can see in this uh, slide, uh, you need to do those adjustments if you're using a uh, Holiday One, HoffaQ, SRKT, Haggis, Holiday Two, Olsen formulas. But if you are using the Barrett Two Universal formula, Barrett Universal Two formula, and the Hill RBA formula in the sites, you may not need to do all these adjustments for a very high myopic case. So now to talk about the Barrett formula, which is, uh, I would say, uh, one of the best formulas that is available today. It is available in the Lens Star as well as uh, it is uh, also available in the AACRS website. Uh, well, uh, the Barrett formula uh, is also called the universal formula, and I will tell you in a moment why it is called an universal formula. formula. Well, uh, Barrett argued that hyperopic surprise occurs because current IL power calculation formulas um, are not designed for use with negative power divers. I am talking about extremely uh, high axial lengths here. So where you are using a negative powered IOLs, current IOL power calculation formulas are not designed for use with negative powered IOLs. So he proposed what? He proposed a thick lens formula that determines lens position uh, via the anatomical depth and utilizes a lens factor related to the physical position of the principal planes, planes of the IOL. And it also calculates the change in principal planes for positive as well as negative IOLs. So Barrett's formula is therefore termed as a universal formula because it is designed to use with multiple lens stands, right? And with short, medium, and long axial lens. Uh, so this, uh, to validate, uh, Barrett compared it with SRKT using manufacturer recommended A constants. In, in many myopic patients, though the data was not that great, it was around 60 patients. He found that the universal formula yielded statistically significant lower residual refractive error, right? So that was actually about the Barrett formula. It is called the universal two formula, and it is there in the ACRS website in case you do not have a lens star. So uh, that was uh, in brief talking about uh, the, uh, the modern formulas and giving you a, a, a picture of the history of the generation of the modern formulas right uh, thank you uh, until next time goodbye